So now we will see about the texturing part of the CTG layer. So my animation here have been colorized and I would like to add some textures. If you have watched the previous tutorials about the texturing, well, where we, we were using the papers and uh, different blending modes, you'll notice that the problem was the fact that the texture couldn't follow a color area. And with the CTG layer, it's very simple to do so. So first of all, let's create our texture. So let's imagine I would like to add a texture on the scarf. So I have to create, first of all, an anime layer. I would hook any drawing tool and use the paper, yeah. Okay, so let's create my texture. You can overflow with your texture. It's not a big deal, since when you will apply the texture, it will follow automatically the shape of uh, the color area. So now we have made our texture. I will save it into the library. The library can be found just here, and it's a place where you can save images. So it can be textures, it can be um, model sheets, or any references, anything just images. So let's make a right click and add current layer image. And here we are, we have our little scarf. Now I don't need any more uh, this layer with this drawing since it has been saved into the library. So I can make a right click and delete the layer. Now I'll go back on my CTG layer and I will click on the little palette to open the texturizer. So first of all, I have to define and add my texture. So I open the library and I double click on it. And then I have to define the tracking zone. The tracking zone is the zone, the color area we will follow. So here I will follow two area, the two colors for the scarf. Then we can decide the render area. In my case, the render area and the tracking zone will be the same. But in some cases, for example, if you have a stain, a wine stain on a, on a t-shirt and it goes on the truther, and it's easier, for example, to follow only one color, the color of the t-shirt, but when you will apply the texture, so the render area, you will check the color of the t-shirt and the color of the truther. But here it's not. Here, the tracking zone and the render area are the same. And so let's start. You'll notice here we have a strange little grid that just appeared. And here the tool panel has changed to show the texturizer options. So we can define the size of the squares. So the bigger the square are, the more rigid they will be. You can also find the rigidity. So something very rigid will move very in a rigid way. And if you use something very small, you have something very uh, like a, a gummy sweet. <laughs> Just like a bubble gum. You can also change the opacity of the content, but don't worry, here the opacity of the content is just an information. Uh, when you will apply definitely the texture, it will keep the original opacity levels. And you can also change the color of the grid. The opacity of the grid, and you can change its color by clicking up outside. Here, actually, since my scarf uh, always have more or less the same size, I can activate the tracking, the auto tracking. It means automatically the texture will try to track the colors and fit automatically to the good place. And so I just have to click apply to see the change in real time. So you see the grid always try to fit a little bit. When auto tracking is enabled, you can't change 
um, its position since it tried to auto tracks automatically. I will, by the way, use more rigidity since it's yeah much better. If anyway, for example, the tracking is not well done, you can always disable it and use some pins to force the texture to be to a place or another one. Here I will make a right click here to lock this point and so the texture will be always attached to th this zone. You can, by the way, mix the pins and the auto tracking if necessary. To unpin something, just make a right click again and unlock a pin, and so it will move alone. Let's enjoy the results. If the texture is not well applied on an image, like for example here, you can see it's still a little blue here, I have the possibility to make a right click on the layer that have been rendered, modify texture application, and reapply it by myself. Much better. Once the texture has been applied, you still have the possibility to change the texture. So let's imagine I would like to reapply a new texture. So again, I will create a new anim layer and I will create something else like. Okay. Something like this. I go back to the library, I make a right click, add current layer image, I delete this layer, and I go back to texturizer and I will click on this to change the texture. And then I can start, and this time I have nothing else to do than watching since the tracking has been already made and so the scarf will move alone. The texture from the calf will move alone. Enjoy. Plus, since the texture has been rendered, it has been rendered as an anim layer. It means then you can play with the opacity levels and on the different blending modes. <laughs>